Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. In our last video, we finally left the Purple Berry Orchard Island. We are now back on the main island, and we have met Burbridge 3000, the Rizzo's Rangers, and most importantly, most importantly, we met the Rizzo's Rangers mascot, whose head I want. And I mean, I would prefer just his headgear because it's like a different mask, and I want it. And it's so ridiculous. I really hope. Like, is it wrong of me to be like, I hope he dies so I can loot it off his body? I feel like that's really wrong, and I shouldn't say things like that on the internet. But yes, 3001, not 3000. But he is an actor, a robot actor. But anyway, we are currently on the quest, The Man Who Chafed. And it says that chief among Helen's many injuries and afflictions at the time of her death were signs of poisoning. Identifying who poisoned her and why could lead you to the real murderer. Although it does seem a bit excessive if the murderer decided to poison her and then shoot her with a, what was it, a plasma weapon of some sort. I feel like that's a bit excessive. Wouldn't you just wait until the poison did its thing? But anyway, we need to go speak with Spencer Woolrick, the one who everybody's constantly making fun of, which should be hilarious. And apparently, apparently he likes to monologue. So, so there's that. But anyway, the autopsy report noted that Spencer Woolrick had complained of intense stomach ailment recently, raising the possibility that whoever poisoned Helen also poisoned Spencer. Speak with him in his room on the VIP guest floor. And it is the last room that I need to investigate. Let's save after all of my monologuing. <laughs> we need to look at all this stuff. Where is my scoped weapon? Spencer Woolrick, with great fortune to you. Oh dear, he is gonna be a piece of work. What does this say? You are talented, you are magnificent. You are a joy for others to be around. You are definitely not a two-bit hack. <laughs> you bring life to the world around you through the art of theater. Theater. Oh, this is just as like his hotel room, right? Do you bring this with you everywhere you go? Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Oh, it's the Jean Lecour lady who's now dead. Um, isn't that Minnie from Minnie Ambrose? There's Burbridge 3000. I know I need to look at things. <laughs> I feel like these are all photoshopped, <laughs> right? Oh, I can't take his stuff without stealing. Can we? Halcyon Knights, Spencer Woolrick. Oh dear. What is this one? It came from Edgewater, full of thrills, chills, and terror, starring Spencer Woolrick as the monster. Okay. Oh, and there's a sword. Can I have your? Can I have the sword? Cause that'd be awesome. Okay. Let's save again. And look at his terminal. So welcome, Spencer Woolrick. Reminder: You have a fingernail in gold in goldening appointment at 5:30 tonight. Um. Okay. <laughs> so to management from Spencer Woolrick. New room urgently demanded. There seems to have been some kind of mistake. When I first arrived at the Grand Colonial for this unveiling, I was led to a small sitting room, the kind that an individual might be allowed to relax in with moderate comfort before being led to his actual quarters. It has been a week and a half, and yet no one has arrived to deliver me to my actual room yet. If I didn't know better, I might assume that this was meant to be my actual room. <laughs> If I didn't know better, I might assume that you tried to place Spencer Woolwork, star of hundreds of serials, the hero of Aetherwave sets colony-wide, in a room where he can hardly walk from one end to the other without bumping his toe on the foot of his bed or his shoulder upon his desk. I might even assume that Ruth Bellamy was placed in the Grand Colonial Penthouse Suite on purpose rather than by mistake, but I am sure the issue will be rectified soon and our positions will be swapped. <laughs> I hope you won't try to tell me anything to the contrary. S. Woolrick. This guy is... Wow. <laughs> Regarding new room urgently demanded... Oh, it's too... Oh, it's too Spencer from management this time. Mr. Woolrick, while the Grand Colonial staff understand your consternation of being placed on the VIP guest level of the Grand Colonial, we're afraid that there was no mistake. Ruth Bellamy, as current spokeswoman... As current spokeswoman... There we go. 
for the Spectrum Brown unveiling is currently slated to have the penthouse suite. An actress of her station deserves only the best. Oh, that's, oh, passive aggressive dig, dang. The VIP guest floor comes in very close as the second best section of the hotel. The penthouse suite is only about twice as large as your current lodgings. You, you should not have told him that. And the amenities it provides are only perhaps three or four times better than those you have, to have access to now. Your current lodgings are proper for an actor of all oh, of your caliber. <laughs> the shade. <laughs> If you have any other requests, we'll be sure to respond to them after we get to Ms. Bellamy's. Oh, you have to wait till we finish getting through her to-do list. The Grand Colonial Management. Oh, this is excellent. And then the guest safety notification. That is so awesome. Oh, this guy is going to be so unhappy with everything. What is this? Danger Close by Spencer Woolrick, Act 7. Scene 15, open at the pilot house night. Johann's danger, played as always by the dashing Spencer Woolrick, stands hands clasped on the roof of the pilot house. He is deeply absorbed in thought, his furrowed brow and downturned lips making his refined face look all the more handsome. <laughs> there is a knock at the door. Enter Lionel, danger's faithful manservant. Lionel, sir, what's the matter? Everyone's looking for you. They want to celebrate how you single-handedly saved Aerodanos from Boss Masher and the dissident junkship. Danger. Ah, Lionel, thank you for coming to get me. I'd love to rejoin the others, truly I would. But? But when I fired my home-built anti-craft cannon, destroying the junkship with a single shot, a flaming piece of shrapnel landed in the middle of Rizzo's distillery. Several workers were killed, but worst of all, the damage to the facility will take thousands of bits to repair. Thousands, just thousands. <laughs> Sir, you are much too hard on yourself. Though the facility was damaged, you saved hundreds of lives by destroying the dissidents. If those people had been freed by the dissidents, that is killed, the losses in future capital would have been much worse. Save you sit. No, you've saved our corporations from that fate. I'm so bad at reading. <laughs> Perhaps you're right, my friend. Perhaps you're right. I am, sir. Now come along. Let us drink a refreshing bottle of Rizzo's Spectrum Brown in celebration of your victory. I'd like that very much. Is this like what you're writing to like take over for Helen? I mean, opportunistic. I mean, nothing super exciting there, but all right, Spencer, let's have a chit chat. About time you arrived. I see you haven't dressed the way I asked you to, but I suppose that was expecting too much of a non-industry lout. Expect a complaint to management. Now, unless you'd like to waste more of my time, I suggest we begin rehearsing. Ready? <coughs> You've fallen right into my trap, Captain. Oh, don't bother to fight back. You <laughs> cannot hope to stop me from installing philosophism as the system's reigning ideology. Did he just like sing at me a little bit? Charm, I can offer you something better than philosophism. Why don't we go someplace in private? Oh, darn. I don't have enough charm. <laughs> You'll never take over Halcyon, you fiend. Wow. How did you know I was a captain? Draw your weapon. <laughs> Huh? I'm getting embarrassed by proxy. You want to talk like a human being? I kind of want to play into it, but I also want to draw my weapon and just scare the dude. <laughs> but but let's um let's let's play along because this is gonna be great. <laughs> How does the scenery taste? Good, I trust. Uh, wait a moment. You're not wearing a bellhop's ID, which must mean you're not Owen's understudy. That man can't even be relied upon to find his own replacement. Oh no, this is curious indeed. Who are you? And how did you get in here? I gotta say I'm a little disappointed. I was kind of hoping to go somewhere. So wait, the understudy is a bellhop? That's, that's your understudy? And there's another missing person? So let's see. I'm here to investigate the murder of Halcyon Helen. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Name's Hawthorne. I'm a ship's captain. Just a marauder, no sudden movements. I'm gonna take anything that's not tied down. No, I'm still gonna go with Hawthorne because that's the that's the identity I have adopted. 
And yet you found your way to my humble hotel room. Why do I feel there's more of a reason for you to be here than you let on? <laughs> I think I know, you cheeky little sprat. Now, what shall I sign first? Your weapon? Your wallet? Or perhaps something uh, a little more personal? Undergarment signatures have been popular of late, or so I've heard. I, I think we'll give that a solid pass. How <laughs> much you sign this? I'm not here for an autograph. I'd like to ask you some questions. Why are you asking to sign things? <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> you can sign my weapon? No, let's just, <laughs> I'm going with the third one. I should think so. Signing things has always been a delight. <laughs> I've even perfected the flourish on the end of the W. By the by, how did you get in here? The only non-staff individual cleared to enter guest rooms is supposed to be the inspector for Bellamy's murder. Oh. Oh! <clears throat> Hello. There you go. You finally got there. <laughs> Fold your arms. Hello. Do you derive some kind of pleasure from wasting people's time? No, let's be intimidating. <clears throat> uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly sorry, Inspector. I didn't realize it was you. I understand that I am beyond willing to comply with your search for the fiend that did Bellamy in. You know, now that I look at you, <laughs> you're the perfect reflection of me. Back when I starred in the Marauder's Pain, the absolute picture of justice. Ask me anything at all. I might even give you a straight answer. Oh, you might. You might give me a straight answer. Great. I've learned a thing or two about your activities in the hotel. I'd like to ask you about the murder. Um, who are you exactly? <laughs> I'm sure you're joking. <laughs> Perhaps I'm not in my prime, but you've no doubt seen the name Spencer Woolrich on many a serial advertisement throughout your travels. Doesn't it, his name kind of sound like an old department store? I feel like... There wasn't there some old department store that sounds like Spencer Woolrich. I'm so bad with obviously names and everything, but like, any, anyway, it doesn't actually matter. So I think I've seen your name around. Oh sure, you were the guy in that one serial. <laughs> Never heard of you, right? Of course. Anyway, other questions. Now let's go with the second one. Come now, I'm sure I would have made more of an impression than that. Could I have really fallen so far behind the times? Did you ever see me in the masked marketeer? The busker of Byzantium? What about episodes 13 and 190 of Princess of Hephaestus? And who could forget from Halcyon with love? I was great in that movie. Even if I was starring beside a two-ton bucket of bolts and a woman with no talent. <laughs> you mean Helen? So busker of bus... Byzantium, Helen wrote a B to implicate her killer before she died. Oh, a two-ton bucket of bolts. Sounds like quite a career. A two-ton bucket of bolts. Let's go with that one. Yes, that would be Burbage 3001. Oh. I'm sure you've heard <laughs> the clomping around. It's over in the next room. It's hard for me to believe that a mechanical actor... Isn't some kind of joke played on us all by Odeon's director? No, they're probably going to try to replace everybody with robots, obviously. So I'd like to ask you about the murder. Let's go with, I hear you were poisoned. Indeed. The agonizing bowel pain was most undignifying. While I've certainly had no shortage of inadequate hotel meals, this was most explicitly pronounced. I suspect poison. And who would be most likely to poison me but Chef Anwar? Oh, we've clashed almost non-stop about his slop preparation. He must have tainted my meal in retaliation. Slop? His, his slop preparation? Are you just calling his food slop or is he actually feeding you slop? So can you think of anyone other than the chef who would want to harm you? Why didn't you go to the clinic for your stomach pain? According to the coroner, Helen was poisoned. Let's not go there yet. But let's ask if there's anyone else who might want to poison him. I'm feeling like the entire staff at the hotel would want to poison him. None that I can think of. I treat all hotel staff equally <laughs> and with the minimum level of respect that they deserve. 
Well, there you go. They all are out to get you. Why didn't you go to the clinic? Is that a jibe? Could you imagine the tabloid headlines? Spencer Woolrich, Aetherwave star, spotted in gastronomic distress. Oh, unseemly hardly describes the half of it. You know, I've, I kind of feel bad for him a little bit. He's he's a total egomaniac. But, like, he's a kind of a, you know, one of those actor has who remembers his glory days. But he's a jerk at the same time. Like, a complete jerk with his overinflated ego and... It's kind of funny, so I'm trying not to feel too bad for him because I don't think Alex slash Heather would. Anyway, according to the coroner, Helen was also poisoned. How alarming! Whoever targeted her was certainly targeting me. I can only thank my ironclad constitution that I'm standing here before you. Hel Helen wasn't killed by poison, though. Oh. Oh! That's very <laughs> good to know. Perhaps the poisoner simply meant to incapacitate us both, uh, disrupt the product launch. I couldn't say, Inspector. I'm merely an actor. Oh, I didn't think about that, that just poisoning the two people who were going to launch the product. Although, I don't know what he would have done, but anyway. Very well, then. No, no, no. I want to... Okay, good. <laughs> so, I'd like to ask you about the murder. Certainly. But one... Quick question before we begin, if I may. Okay. How was it that Bellamy met her end? She was poisoned in shower plasma. That's a little difficult to answer. <laughs> Painful, I'd say. Why are you so curious? Yeah, why is he so curious? But back to my, I think, incomplete thought. So I guess my incomplete thought about the poisoning. See, I'm even speaking in incomplete thoughts. So I'm guessing that if Helen and Spencer were poisoned... They were to participate in some big launch for Spectrum Brown. And maybe somebody who didn't want them to have a big launch, like that Spacer's Choice saboteur guy, might have poisoned them both to like delay the launch or embarrass Rizzo's or something. I mean, that could happen, right? But probably not, but there's a thought. But anyway, back, back to why are you so curious? Why, I'm merely worried for my own sake. Perhaps whoever came after her could come after me next. But if you don't want to tell me, I understand. Whatever happened, I hope poor Bellamy didn't suffer. Okay. So where were you at the time of the murder? I don't know why he would think that they would come after him. It's not like you guys are friends or compatriots or, I don't know, allies in any way, shape or form. You were co-stars. You don't have to like each other to be co-stars. I'm just saying. Anyway, what were you up to at the time of the murder? I was meditating, of course. That's how I get into character. Of course you were. Got anybody who can corroborate that? Respectfully, Inspector. It is rather counterproductive <laughs> to commune with others while meditating. And you were meditating, really? All actors have their methods. And this has been mine ever since I met that wonderful prophet of profitability. She taught oh, really? me it for my role in The Unemployed Cometh. I had to lie face down on artificially heated pavement. The director wanted our suffering to be convincing. Needless to say, being able to leave my body helped to mitigate the pain both during the eight-hour shoot and with the second-degree burns afterwards. I owe that woman much. Um, uh, like, okay, okay, like, uh, uh, all right. Like, that all, sounds so, I, I'm kind of speechless because that sounds so horrible. As an actor, to lay down on pavement that's going to give you second degree burns for eight hours and the only way to get through it was to meditate with the help of the prophet of profitability also i feel like that name is so ridiculous but anyway how long have you worked with the prophet yeah actually only since i've been at the colonial the unemployed cometh was shot on sight that makes it um, a few weeks i cannot recommend her services enough if you haven't been to see her yet you really should so in the last few weeks, you did a scene where you were burned alive, basically, and you're already better. 
no second degree burns. I feel like there should be some scarring of some sort when you're face down on a pavement, but it's fine. I'll answer whatever you wish. Okay, did you know Helen well? All right, speaking theoretically, how would you have killed the victim? No, let's ask it how well he knew Helen. This should be interesting. Bellamy has been my co-star throughout the autumn of my career. I should like to think I knew her. In fact, I cannot name a single role in the last ten years that did not involve her in some way. Unless you count the uncredited silent shopkeep on Melissa's meteoroids. A, f a silent shopkeep? Oh, that's so sad. It must not have been too flattering, always starring alongside a younger actress. Do you consider yourself a friend of hers? Uh, I hope I can do all of these, but let's start with the friend. I'll ask you this. If you'd been the star of cinema for years, then suddenly found yourself scrounging for bit parts while a younger person stole the limelight, how would you feel? In short, the two of us weren't close. But that's not to say my dislike of her was so extreme that I tried to do anything drastic. Resenting Bellamy is one thing, but Killing her is another completely. It's also beneath me. <laughs> beneath you. Um, let's see. I think it would also affect your pocketbook, right? Let me see if I can go back to those other options. Bellamy. It Must not have been too flattering. Why did you keep starring alongside her? I'm not too proud to admit it. I couldn't get work on my own. Whether or not I wanted to accept it, Bellamy had captured the eye of the colony. People kept talking about the charisma we had on screen, but I felt more chemistry with certain teacup canids than with her. <laughs> As you may have been able to conclude, I wasn't terribly enamored with Bellamy, but that doesn't mean I'd kill her. Okay, and then there was a third Bellamy, option. It must not have been too flattering, always starring alongside a younger actress. I have a feeling that that's going to be similar to the second one answer wise oh it wasn't and don't think i haven't picked up on your tone <laughs> resenting bellamy is one thing but okay all right speaking theoretically how would you have killed the victim oh come now inspector what do you take me for i'm an old man i neither have the time nor the willpower to kill people for fun besides i have my reputation to think of yeah I suppose that is enough on that grim subject. Yeah, I, uh, I feel like that's, he makes a good point. I think Helen could take him in a fight, probably. <laughs> so I've learned a thing or two about your activities in the hotel. Oh, have you now? Please do go on. Uh, uh, don't leave me in suspense. Found a bottle of tainted liqueur. Might have had something to do with your poisoning. I did. I spoke to Burbridge. He told me you upgraded him. I did indeed. With Halcyon Helen parading her fame about, I was left without an acting partner. Burbage is no exception. His acting protocols <laughs> were nothing short of a joke. So I decided to make some modifications, installing him with some of my old serial quotes as, I think, improved his range. The way he bungled about with that weapon of his hardly befitted a dissident, so I modified it as well. He's much quicker on the draw now, though he's still a machine. Why would you want to adjust his weapon protocols? I feel like that could backfire so easily. And if he's supposed to be a marauder, you might want to take off the top hat and the, you know, the tux to go with it. Just, just put it out there. So apparently I found a bottle of tainted liqueur might have had something to do with your poisoning. I don't remember this. And I also didn't do like the investigation thing before I talked to him, which probably would have helped, but we'll, co we'll come back to that in a second. That, yes, yes. I distinctly recall ordering an alcoholic beverage with my meal. This hotel is certainly bringing a new meaning to the phrase rot gut. Management shall receive the complaint to end all complaints got my eye on you. I'm quite used to being breathlessly watched. Ew. Goodbye. Um. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Is this the, the liqueur bottle? Discrepancy detected. This bottle, recently discarded, contains residue from foreign substances. Chemical analysis complete. This unit has detected the following substances. Oil, terroray, blood, terroray, unidentifiable biological fluids, terroray. Ew. Were these substances added later? Taste this? I don't want to get poisoned. Yes, Inspector. Logical analysis indicates these substances were not present in the bottle's original contents. Is it toxic? These substances cause extreme gastrointestinal distress in humans. Large doses can be fatal. This bottle contained Rizospectrum vodka. The presence of terroray biological fluids may have significantly improved its flavor. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes so bad. Adding terroray fluids makes it taste better. Okay, so that that's the there we go. I, I found it now. But I had updates to my quest. So I spoke with Spencer Woolrich, speak with Chef Anwar. Spencer claimed that someone had poisoned his meal right around the time of Helen's murder. He said it had he'd had frequent arguments about his meal preparations with Chef Anwar, the Grand Colonial's premier chef. It's possible that the chef is involved in Helen's poisoning. You discovered a liquor bottle in Spencer's room that contained traces of tearaway tearaway bile. What's over here in my codex? I feel like I have a bunch. Nope, just one. <laughs> okay. So let's think this through. I'm guessing maybe Helen came over to Spencer's room to talk to him or he shared a drink with her maybe. What floor would you and that's how she got go. poisoned. Like the chef was poisoning Spencer and Helen accidentally got a dose. Maybe. Where is the chef? Where is, where is the chef? Okay, over here. Please only. I don't remember this room either. I really poorly explored this hotel. Broken elevator notice. The Grand Colonial Hotel service elevator is out of order and will be for the foreseeable future. Please use the stairs to transport all equipment to and from the employee quarters until further notice. Additional liniments will be dispensed for those whose back pain becomes too severe to continue providing the impeccable service our hotel is known for. Can you not fix the the elevator? Is that like, okay, is it out of parts or something? I'm on the lookout for alcohol because... Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. I don't feel like it's him. Oh, analyze. Here Analysis of this stovetop reveals an alarming degree of grease <laughs> buildup. Approximating proximity to volatile gases and chemicals. Chances of an explosive combustion upon next use currently at 92.9%. Um, this seems like a workplace hazard. How hasn't Slug caught this? Is this normal? Most corporations have regular cleaning procedures to prevent damage to company property. Slug, already unlike most corporations in a variety of ways, does not. That or the employees tasked with inspecting are shirking their duties. For shame. For shame. Um, I don't know how the last time I saved was, but we're going to turn it on. But this seems like a workplace hazard. How hasn't Slug caught this? Searching Slug work logs. No work log found. Creating conjecture. <laughs> slug has likely not fixed this issue due to a lack of responsibility on the part of their employees. I know. Shocking. Let's turn it on. You sure that's a good idea? Yes. Performing scan. Gaslight appears to have gone out some time ago. Chance of explosive combustion without gaslight, 0.01%. That's so disappointing. <laughs> I wanted to like blow us up and have a death scene. <laughs> that would have been so funny. I'm so messed up. <laughs> chef Anwar. Is that the same chef from the base game? He was on a different planet or am I? I'm, I'm confusing people, aren't I? Fresh wo half woolly milk. Well, there's a a woolly cow upstairs in somebody's hotel room, which I, there, there's a joke there somewhere, right? Okay, let's save and talk to Chef Anwar. Yes? Are you here for the double rack of smoked sprat? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you'll have to wait. Oh, don't give me that look. Let me see if I can pencil you in for later. 
Actually, what am I saying? I can't do that. I'm booked for the next month. You'll have to make a reservation. You feeling okay? You seem a little out of it. Why are you talking about food? Don't you care about the crime that just occurred? Aw, oh, no smoke spread. What about purple berry glazed cated flank steaks? I'm here to investigate Halsey and Helen's murder. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, let's go to the second one. That sounds sarcastic. I... Weren't you listening? <laughs> We're reserved solid for the next month. I'm sorry, but you'll really need to order in advance. Fine. Uh, I understand. Just get me some woolly cheese curd with fried nanners and I'll stop asking. I is this some kind of a joke? <laughs> We're not able to take on new orders at this time. I told you. <laughs> really? Not even braised cysty ribs on a bed of mock apple leaves? No, no, we don't. W why are you doing this? Please stop. <laughs> Got any ketchup? Here, just take it. Just take it and don't ask me for anything ever again. <laughs> God, I love this game. It is so hilarious. <laughs> I love how they just went for all of the ridiculousness. It's so great. Anyway, why are you talking about food? Don't you care about the crime that just occurred? Crime or no crime, I must keep my head on my work. One does not simply become the head chef in all of Eridanos <laughs> by fretting over <laughs> irrelevant happenings. I feel like that's one does not simply meme from like, you know, Lord of the Rings. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny. <laughs> I'm here to investigate Halcyon Helen's murder. I think you should fret with this lockdown. You can't get any fresh ingredients. Since when is a murderer irrelevant? It happened 15 feet away from your kitchen. Well, it didn't happen in my kitchen. <laughs> Who exactly are you anyhow? What is it you want? I'm the inspector. Frankly, I don't know why I'm here. Everyone keeps telling me I'm an inspector. <laughs> oh god that's great um i'm an i'm here to investigate halcyon and helen's murder i'd like to ask you a few questions um no i don't want to go too crazy you're you're the inspector here why i i mean you may ask me whatever you want i have nothing to hide <laughs> did you prepare all of helen's meals you seem pretty wed to your craft. Were you in the kitchen at the time of the murder? So you said you were the hotel chef. What's that like? I prep dishes day in and day out for guests. And while I doubt their palates are refined enough for my flavors, the work is rewarding. <laughs> After all, I can take pride knowing that I simply am the best cook this side of Halcyon. No one else can even hope to compare. You don't seem too sure about it. And are you like the only cook this side of Halcyon? So therefore you're the best by default? I'm just putting it out there. So you seem pretty wet to your craft. Uh, no, as it so happens, I was down in the employee break room. I wasn't taking an unsanctioned break, of course. I was merely fetching ingredients. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're lying to me, sir. And I, I don't really appreciate it. Did you prepare all of Helen's meals? I feel like he, did you kill the original chef and take his place and you're just pretending to be a chef and that's why the food is so horrible and everybody keeps pretending it's great because they don't understand that it is actually horrible. I'm, I'm off on a tangent again. I've been doing that a lot today. Like these conversations are great. <laughs> of course I did. I would never allow anyone else to touch the meals of so important a guest. Helen's last meal was poisoned. And you're sure no one else was involved? Well, well, yes, I'm positive. Why? If Helen was poisoned and no one else touched her meal, you poisoned her then, right? Something about this isn't adding up. Why don't you tell me the truth? I need to make sure I got the poisoner's confession. You've been a big help. Um, something about this isn't adding up. Where's that going? How? Oh, fine. There may have been times I left Helen's meal unsupervised. I see. Spencer Woolrich and Bellhop Owens were underfoot in the kitchen as I was preparing Helen's meal. Either one of them could have tampered with the food when I was fetching ingredients. I see. Alibi's a little thin here. Why should I believe anything you're saying? 
Why were you being so evasive about leaving Helen's food unattended? Any idea where I might be able to find Bellhop Owens? What was Spencer Woolwork doing in the kitchens? Oh, I want to ask all these. Let's start with the second one. Well, it's a breach of professionalism, of course. Why else would I worry about it? I don't, I don't know. You were doing something you were supposed to not be doing. I guess some halcyon food combinations turned acid when un unsupervised. If you tell me the truth, I might be more inclined to believe the rest of what you say. Well, I suppose that's as good a point as any I've heard. I may have taken some time to engage in a teensy bit of recreational drinking, and consequently, I may have been somewhat less than coherent after preparing Helen's meal. <laughs> so you were drunk on the job then, basically. Okay, so what, what was Spencer Woolrich doing around the kitchen? Mr. Woolrich often finds the hotel's meals wanting. He seems to enjoy complaining in person. Really? While I could appreciate someone with a discerning palate for once, I believe that Mr. Woolridge simply enjoys the attention he gets from us. Though, don't tell him I said as much. If you wish to speak with him, Mr. Woolridge can most likely be found in his suite on the VIP guest floor. He's usually there if he's not poking around here. Okay. Where can I find Bellhop Owen? Yes, but not specifically. Owens often procures exotic ingredients from the creatures at the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve. Our guests can be rather... particular. Let's not talk about the incident with the raptodon pheromone glands. Oh no, let's talk it's about It's always that. hard to say when Owens might be back. If I were you, I'd make a trek to the reserve myself. Otherwise, who knows how long you'll have to wait. But I want to talk about the pheromone gland incident because I feel like if he works at the fair, if he works in the wilderness, whatever, the reserve, there you go. And there was terror parts in the bottle that poisoned Spencer and Helen, then he obviously has something to do with it, right? Alibi's a little thin here. Why should I believe anything that you're saying? I understand your reluctance, but oh. Oh, I just remembered. The kitchen security camera. It'll prove I'm telling the truth about everything. Constable Keen has access to the security footage in her office at the spaceport. If you visit her, you can figure out what truly happened with Helen's meal. Hmm. Okay, that's all I wanted to ask about. Guess we'll see if you're telling the truth. Thank you for your understanding, Inspector. I'm sure you'll find the true culprit before long. Okay, so I had updates. Retrieve the kitchen security footage. Security footage of the kitchen would verify that Chef Anwar wasn't the one handling food in the kitchen. Even if the footage doesn't exonerate him, it at least casts some doubt that he was the poisoner. The footage can be retrieved from the constable's office at the docks. And then also speak to Bellhop Owens. Is that, is, I'm assuming this is a different guy from the other Bellhop we've been talking to, because that guy was a big Helen Stan, right? Anyway, Bellhop Owens was responsible for taking meals up to VIP guests suggesting that Owens may have had something to do with the poisoning. So Bellhop was last seen heading to the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve. Okay. But I want to come down here and look at the... Employee area. There's the rest of the sentence. Age wizard. All right. Hushing up. Hmm. Something mighty strange went on earlier. What happened? Norville get his cap stuck in the toilet again? <laughs> Not today. I was carrying a bag up to the second VIP guest floor earlier. Even for our guests, it was spectacularly heavy. Wow, exciting. I wasn't finished. I took a bad step and dropped it. Know what spilled out? Rocks. Whoever owned it was just making me carry it around for fun. Why? That sounds horrible. Um, can't do that. Notice a promotion. Congratulations, employee and or addressee. You have been rewarded one free tour of the Rizzo's Distillation and Libation Station as a reward for logging at least 10,000 hours of service to the Rizzo's family as you take your first sip of your choice of Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka. Remember to take a moment to experience gratitude. 10,000 hours? So that's like what? 
three years or something, maybe? Like, that's insane. <laughs> So engineer job posting attention. The Grand Colonial Hotel is seeking a new volunteer engineer. <laughs> Skills include elevator maintenance, electrical engineering, civil engineering, computer engineering, quantum engineering, knowing when to keep problems to oneself. The employee who accepts this position will be expected to carry out their existing duties at the hotel for no additional payment. Talk to your supervisor if you're interested during your 15 minute break. And don't forget with more hours logged each week, the closer you get to winning the free tour. Wow. That's can't steal that. Can't steal that. I can't, I can't imagine steal what it. it must be like living down here, like sprats in a wall. Yeah. It would be awful. Incoming. Uh. For this. Oh, there's more of them. Evil spread. Why am I covered in purple? What is going on with these sprats? You uh, hear about the murder? How the hell could I not have heard about it? We couldn't even leave our rooms earlier while security was sweeping for evidence. Well, maybe you were asleep? Since management started issuing mandatory caffeinoid supplements, I haven't been able to sleep. It's making it hard to tolerate small talk. <laughs> I think she's telling you to shut up and go away. Broken elevator notice? Okay. So they want an engineer to do all this engineering work. An engineer, but they don't want to pay them more. And uh, yeah, you basically get no perks for more responsibility. Wow! I haven't felt this great in ages! I wonder what happened! Did you have something put into your body? Are you enjoying the amenities? You don't have anything on your neck. Not yet, anyway. What on earth? Out of order notice. Please excuse our mess. We're working hard to remove all the valuable treasures our valued guests have misplaced into our pipes. Per usual, items recovered from the sewage inhaler will be auctioned off at the start of the month to the employees of the Grand Colony Hotel. Note that sanitation materials will be auctioned. Ew. I, I. Well, like, how are they supposed to go to the bathroom when this stuff is? You know what? I don't. I don't want to know. I don't think I want to know. What did that say? Steel rum and something. That terror ray beak. Oh, purple berry liqueur. Earrings. Okay, that's not. No. Gotta find my vodka. My my multi. My rainbow of you vodka. Get for lunch. Pea free nut butter and jelly free jam on premature bread. Tastes like nothing. Looks like you win this round. I couldn't afford lunch, so I caught a sprat lurking around crew quarters. Bony, but uh, it's something. You know those things eat garbage, right? Good point. I'll try that next if I can't catch any more sprats. So they're like starving you? Sir. Ma'am. Oh, that's awful. I was a few minutes late with room service earlier today. Guest I was trying to serve shot at me with a revolver. What? I left the drink and ran. Oh, uh, something like that happened to me once. Hammersmith exec called me up to her room, saying she needed help with something. Yeah? Turned out what she needed help with was testing a new Hammersmith heavy machine gun. She technically shot around me instead of at me, but it was still pretty... surprising. Surprising? That's horrifying. Oh, what the... Oh my law, there's a mosquito in my sandwich. Ew. Whoa, are you alright? You get stung? Nah, I noticed it before I bit into it. It's dead, thankfully. Still, though, that was... Why are you looking at me like that? I mean, are you gonna eat the wasquito or not? If not, I mean, I finished my spread. Just saying. Oh gosh, this is so horrible. I feel like he's gonna, like, eat her next or something. Happy workers lead to happy customers. Happy customers are repeat customers. See, I feel like she should have a creepy smile and one of those things in her neck. 
No, that's it. Oh, I want more of the silly banter conversations. Ammo. Okay, we have a door that we can shut, so you two need to close it behind you so we can rob the poor employees. I'm not gonna steal their food. Well, I might. <laughs> Is that kind of safe? That's different. Room B1 key card. Hmm. Oh, is this room B1? No, it's not. <laughs> like, where are we even going? <laughs> it's all in the wrist. Another set of stairs that go where? Who are you? Bellhop Sullivan? Why, hello there. Goodness, I always enjoy seeing guests, but it's been so long since I've chatted face to face that I about hopped out of my skin at the sight of you. Excuse me, I should introduce myself, though you might know me already, just not by name. I'm Bellhop Sullivan. You've likely heard my dulcet tones through the elevator intercom. Oh. Oh, okay. I recognize your voice. Pleased to finally meet you. I don't recognize your voice. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just looking around with a voice like that. It's surprising no one smashed the intercom yet. No, I, let's be nice. She, she, she seems like a nice lady. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of you to say. I'm glad to meet you too. Now that our introductions are out of the way, do let me know if I can help you with anything. Well, since you offered, you said you operate the elevator, right? Can guests not press the buttons themselves? I assume bellhops all know each other. Any gossip about Norval? You know anything about bellhop Owens and the murder? Um, let's be nice first before we ask about the button pressing. So let's ask about Norval. Oh yes, Norval's great. Always ready to help any and all guests who might need it. And so handsome too. Oh really? His judgment sometimes leaves something to be desired, I will say. Kept badgering Halcyon Helen prior to her death about an autograph or something. A little beyond his station. Okay, that's the one who was the big stand. So they, uh, Owens and Norval are obviously two different people. <laughs> so let's ask about Bellhop Owens. Owens? I hardly spot him. Generally, he's at Mr. Woolrich's beck and call, fetching this or that, helping with his room, and providing as his acting partner far more often than not. Ooh, that was strange. I've never felt quite as pleased as I just was to be tasked with working this elevator for 16 hours every day. <laughs> so I wonder if if Spencer and Owens are friend, f friends of a sort, did Spencer ask Owens to get the ingredients to poison Helen and he was down in the kitchen distracting the chef so that Owens could poison Helen's stuff, only he accidentally also poisoned Spencer's stuff as well, stuff being food and drink, maybe, maybe, who knows. But anyway, do you know anything about Halsey and Helen's murder? Unfortunately not. <laughs> I was in the operator room for the elevator, as usual. The camera feed only allows me to see within the elevator, which always has many people coming through. For what it's worth, the murder was a right shame. I always enjoyed the serials starring Ms. Helen, though I did find them prone to repetitive plot structures. <laughs> but I'm sure you've heard the rumor about what actually did her in. No. That marauders got into the hotel and management is covering it up so the guests don't run off. Really? Have marauders been a problem at the Grand Colonial Hotel before? Well, not necessarily, <laughs> but they're fairly prevalent on the other complexes. It wouldn't take much for them to find their way here. Slug claims they've got the problem under control, but I don't understand why they haven't simply gone and exterminated all of the marauders like the vermin they are. It... Oh, well, I'm just here to push buttons. I mean, they probably respawn. That's why the marauders just keep coming. That, that's why. But you said you operate the elevator, right? Can guests not press the buttons themselves? Well, yes, but having an operator certifies that the right guests end up on the proper floors. We wouldn't want toss ball players rubbing shoulders with CEOs. It'd be anarchy. Such anarchy. Plus, 
There's always the risk a guest chips a nail or loses a ring on a button. It's an extra effort, but the Grand Colonial prides itself on personalized service in all things. That and the elevator still works if I'm ever not around. I do take occasional breaks and sleep every so often. <laughs> okay, bye. It kind of reminds, like, her job reminds me of those, like, I don't know, the movies that you would see. I, I've never obviously seen it in person, but, like, the movies you would see where they had, like, the bellhops who would, like, what floor would you like? And they'd push the floor button for you, which always seemed odd to me. And then they would get tipped for that, right? But, you know, whatever. But it, it reminds me that that's her job only. Of course the hotel don't give their workers a decent living. Why would they? That'd be, you know, decent. Yes, you are accurate. But her that that is her job, except that she's not in the actual elevator. That's, I think, where my thoughts were going with that ever, ever so poorly. Goodness gracious. This is a huge employee area. Iceberg, Adreno. Oh my gosh, they sleep out in the hallway? Oh gosh. This is terrible. You're not an angry sprat. Apparently it's okay to take all this stuff. I feel like I'm coming down here right now when I probably shouldn't, but we're already here. May as well keep going. Oxycomp aromatic. Okay. Look at that. I like the different safe model. That's cool. A terminal. Oh no. Oh, I gotta go get Max. Dang it. All right, well, let's start with hallway A. A1. Oh, key to B1. I see. Work IDs of Helen's sidekicks. This pile of cartridges contains the IDs of Halcyon Helen's sidekicks, who were killed, mortally wounded, mulched, melted, torn to ribbons, decapitated, or turned into mechanicals in the line of duty, or otherwise identified post mortem. Typhon Tim Olympus Opal. Oh, she was not an actual person. She was a robot. Terra to Terry Sparks the Wonder Canid. Burbage is 1900 through 1999. Bolt, a Vanderhuge, Eridanos Eve, inconsequential groundbreaker, maintenance worker number 13B9. Caleb Bison, the broker with four broken limbs. Halifax, the entire 26th season of the Tile Backers. IDs blackened beyond individual recognition. Stakeout Steve and Dirk Tenderly. That's a lot of robots that are no longer with the, with anybody. So, did Halcyon Helen like live here? Spectacular and thrilling and great adventures of Alan Norvell and Halcyon Helen, chapter 45 of 137. And because the ever resolute Lord Bellhop Alan Norvell, oh, is this Norvell's room? Had brought his automatic Spacer's Choice auto pistol, now with added explosive ammo, which he held in his bag, muscular. <laughs> Let's try that again. Which he held in his big, muscular hands. The gigantic horde of rabid canids was all dead. Halcyon Helen looked very beautiful, as always, with her beautiful eyes and lips and nice shoes. <laughs> she quickly grabbed Lord Bellhop, Alan Norville's hand. Oh, thank you so much, Alan. She sighed slowly, patting her beautiful eyes. It's everything's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful eyes at him and also slow and also slowly. You are the best partner I have ever teamed up with. You are so big and strong and good at shooting. <laughs> I wish I had you with me from day one. Then maybe I would not have had so many dead sidekicks. It ain't no big deal, Purpleberry Cakes. Purpleberry Cakes, <laughs> chuckled Lord Bellhop, Alan Norville, as he took a puff from his cigarette and blew the smoke from the barrel of his Spacer's Choice auto pistol at the same time. I am just a wandering assassin. Being good at shooting stuff <laughs> is only because I am part of my job. What? Yes, you are. And you are so handsome, sighed the beautiful Helen. You need a thesaurus, dude, okay? <laughs> Thank you, chuckled Lord Bellhop Alan Norville. Just then, they started to go for a kiss. But wait, just as the romance was about to happen, suddenly a hand had grabbed Alan's leg. Helen screams, it's me, the dissident lord. I am here to get you. 
<laughs> in, in random capitalization. <laughs> I'm here to get you and take your bits and give them to everyone else for free, screams the dissident lord as the villain begins to crawl out of the dirt. His zombie army <laughs> was also crawling to the surface behind him as well. I guess there's only one thing to do, sneered the heroic Lord Bellhop as he took a big hammersmith flamethrower out of his back pocket <laughs> that he had been keeping secret for just this occasion. Time to make some dissident stakes. I feel like this is poorly written fan fiction. <laughs> beautiful. She's so beautiful. Oh, Alan. Lord, Lord Bellhop, Alan Norville. We should totally go talk to you after this. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Oh, really? Inspector, I've detected a structural anomaly within a 0.8 meter radius of this locked door. Hmm. That floor panel, it doesn't quite fit. Does the door have a weak point? Should I try to smash through it? Where is a nearby open vent when you need one? Could you narrow that down for me? Yes, of course. It's very obvious, but uh, why don't you tell me what it is for dramatic effort <laughs> or effect rather? Apologies, Inspector. This unit has not been programmed with a histrionics module. Dramatic effects are currently disabled. Oh, <laughs> I could fix that. Let me just wire together a temporary histrionics simulator. Histrionics mode temporarily activated. Now simulating dramatic effect. <laughs> Look out, Inspector. This floor panel is 0.3 millimeters shorter than regulation length. Unauthorized modifications are afoot. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. Oh, okay. So can I click on it? Huh. I... Hmm. I need to find the A2 key card. I'm trapped. In room A3. Please. Someone come help me. Hello? How are you... I can't even click on the door. How did you get stuck in there? Alright, let's investigate one more room and then we'll... We'll need to pause. You guys don't have any vodka. It's actually very frustrating. <laughs> oh, vodka red. Oh, I already have red. But I do have like, I think five of them, which is not bad. I must have found a bunch in the last video. I'm feeling weak. Please just open the door. I'm not sure how much longer I'll make it. Oh no. Well, uh, I'm so sorry, ghostly voice, but I'm gonna need to pause here for today. But on Saturday, I want to try to finish exploring all of the areas down here in the employee area. That kind of made sense. And hopefully try to free this person in here. And I don't I don't know, go from there. I was hoping to go and find the mascot today, but I got distracted by all, all of this. <laughs> but anyway, that's the plan. And as usual, we will go from there. But as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe. And I will see you again on Saturday with another new Outer Worlds video.